Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are going over every single material UI component. In today's video, we're going to talk about the list component and if you have a website, chances are there's a list somewhere on that website and I'm going to break down how to use this somewhat complex but easy once you understand it component that has a bunch of different subcomponents. I mean, look at all these list, list item, list item, avatar, list. we're going to go over all of these and if you find value in this video, make sure you leave a comment, it helps so much with the algorithm. Also make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to learn more about React and Matil UI and share this with a friend that wants to learn how to style their components so they don't look like basic HTML. Now let's jump straight into the component. Essentially, the lists that you find in Matil UI aren't sort of the same lists you would find in just native HTML with LI and UL tags. As you can see here, this is what a basic list looks like. It sort of looks like something you would see on the side of a page, like over here in this drawer, and a lot of the times that might be what it is used for. Now, essentially, you have everything nested inside of this one list component. So for example, you can see here we're importing list, and then from list we import list item, list item button, list item icon, list item text. And you can probably guess what most of these are doing. If we look at this list, we can sort of break it down into a couple of different pieces. We have the entire list, then we have sort of each individual list item, which you are able to click on. That is what is known as a list item button. And then within this list item button, um, and by the way, the list item button lives within the list item component as well. But if you want to make them clickable, then you have to wrap, uh, then you have to wrap it in a list item button. Um, and within the list item button, we have an icon on the left and some text on the right. So you guessed it, the icon on the left is wrapped around the list item icon and the text is wrapped around the list item text. So let's look at the code. As we can see, we have our top level list where all the items are in, just like we talked about. And you can see this one's sort of split into two separate lists with a divider in the middle. You can also see that in the code. They just have a divider here and then they have a separate list. But let's just focus on the first one. Um, you can see here that for each list item, we start it with the list, the list item tag. Um, they're passing it a disable padding tag, which will probably just disable a bit of padding in between the items. Um, then of course you wrap your list item button around it which will give it this everything inside of the list item this sort of clickable feel that you can click on then we have a list item icon and all we're doing is passing in the icon we want which for the first list item is the icon um, the inbox icon and then under it we have the list item text <clears throat> now you'll see that for list item text, you can pass in a primary and a secondary text. In this case, they only passed in a primary text and they made it say inbox. Um, but if there was a secondary text, which you'll see in some of the examples below, they are just below <clears throat> this inbox text. Then in the second list item, it's almost the exact same, except this time they have a little mail icon and they just named it drafts. And you can scroll down and you'll see that the second example over here is just the same, except they left out the icons for that one. So let's keep scrolling. Um, you can see we also have the ability to nest list. And if you want to go ahead and nest list, for example, you can see that this star icon is sort of inside of this inbox item, uh, sort of with an expand more item. All they really do is they ex they have a the one of these collapse um, components, which I talk about in a different video. And within that collapse component, all it really does is it allows you to you know show content depending on a state variable. So in this case, the state variable is going to be this open variable that essentially just triggers uh, whenever you click on this icon or this whole list item as a whole and inside of that collapse they have just nested another list uh, with the same components inside of it so on an outside view it looks like there are just a ton of components in use here and it can be really confusing you just have to remember that everything is sort of nested in the exact same way on the top level you have a list then you have a list item then if you want to make it clickable you have the button then you can have an icon and some text and maybe if you want to list under that list you can have a collapse um, a component that pretty much just hides or shows a div depending on a state variable. And in this case, the div just happens to be another list, giving it sort of a nested um, list feel. We have another example, they call this a folder list, but in essence, it's just the same uh, type of thing. You can see here, these are not clickable, so there's no um, list item buttons being wrapped in the list item. And of course, this is the uh, subtext I was talking about. So you can see for all these list item texts, they have the primary, which is gonna be, you know, for this example, this item, it'll be photos. And then the secondary, which is just the date uh, that sort of shows in this more opaque uh, gray font underwear. Now they have this really nice little interactive demo if you wanted to go in 
and play around with it. The link to all this documentation, by the way, will be in the description. And you can go ahead and see what it looks like if you enable the dense prop on the list item. So uh, on the actual list item itself, you have a prop that sort of makes the list item uh, dense so um or i guess you pass it into the list itself it's a prop for the list itself if it is dense it sort of just removes a bunch of padding on all the different elements you can also enable secondary text but um that's pretty much uh all the different things that you have here and it's important to know that with this uh example as well for the folders you can see here that these icons are actually avatars and those avatars which are um i have another video on just plain avatars essentially it's just a circular sort of profile pic looking thing where you can pass in icons or um, images or font uh, you can see instead of using a list item icon they're using the list item avatar component uh, to display some of these um, uh, avatars and you can see here that over here they have the list item avatar which they then nest the actual avatar which they then um, nest an icon in so if you wanted to you know uh, instead of just have an icon you wanted to have like let's say for example a circle around it and make the icon a different color and we go over all of this in our avatar tutorial which I'll also link in the description you could also use the list item avatar instead of the list item icon and the difference is you when you use the list item avatar you nest an avatar with the icon but if you're just using the list item icon you just nest the icon and I know that sounds super confusing but it's pretty much just a bunch of components that are made for different use cases. So in one case, you have an avatar with an icon nested inside of it, and you just use the avatar versions of the list item components. And the other one, you just have a plain um, icon uh, for that case. The next thing is they show you how you can use the um, sort of selected prop on a list item to make one of the items look highlighted. Um, I believe it actually goes to the list item button. I, um, it's a prop to the list item button. So um, all they have here is a state variable which keeps track of a number. And that number um, correlates to, you know, um, the number that the array, uh, the list item is. So for example, this would be list item zero, list item one, two, and three, and so forth. And whenever they click on this list item, all it does is it sets that state variable equal to whatever the index is. So for example, if I click on this one, it'll set um, the uh, state variable that keeps track of the selected index to one and then what you can do here is you can set the selected prop um, equal to this boolean statement which will be true uh, let's go for the for the one we're actually setting which will be true if the selected index is one and if you click on the zeroth um, list item element you can have it uh, the boolean evaluate to be true if the selected index is equal to the zeroth element and when it is in the, uh, uh, when it is selected you can see that it just adds sort of like a little uh, blue background to it to show the user that that's currently the place that they are on um, the other thing to note is that if you have for example a lot of text items here your avatar for example if you have an avatar list item with a bunch of text on the right um, it will naturally try to stay in the middle of the div so this avatar would probably be a little bit lower unless you pass in a prop called align items and pass in the value flex start um, to the actual list item itself to make sh make sure that this avatar um, is at the flex start of the div um, and not sort of in the middle of it so it just keeps it more in line with the material ui design standards instead of just being in the middle of it because if this got really big you probably wouldn't want it to be like in the middle of a giant piece of text because then the user would see like half the text um, and then the avatar would just randomly be in the middle of it although i don't think much list items uh there, there's a lot of use cases where your list items will be like that now they have some cool examples where you can uh, nest different form and inputs into the actual uh, list and luckily there's no custom components for that over here they are just straight up um, inputting the checkbox the material UI checkbox component um, inside of the icon uh, the list item icon slot so normally you might have an icon on the left side in this case they decide to replace that um, icon that you might normally have in there with just a checkbox and if you know how the check checkbox works and we will also have a video on that then it's pretty much self-intuitive and the same thing with having the checkbox on the right side um, and you if you wanted to make it on the right side um, all you have to do is sort of reorder how you pass it in so for example you can see here we have the avatar then we have uh, the item text and if you wanted to just make this on the right side all you really have to do is the list item comes with a prop called secondary action and anytime you see secondary action in any material UI uh, components 
a lot of the times that's just going to mean something that shows up on the very right of that component and you can see here um, all they did was pass in the checkbox component to the very right of it if you wanted to make it on the very left you could pass it in, in um, just like over here you could pass it in a list item icon or even uh, you know for example on this uh, example they have the avatar on the left so they just pass in the list item avatar with an avatar inside of it linking to images of all these random people um, and the same thing goes if you just wanted a switch switch is another just Mutual UI input that you could you know do the exact same thing you did with a checkbox here and just add that to the right now they have some custom examples where for example you can make the header sticky um, another one where for example if you have a list item with an actual icon and you have a list item without an icon you can use the inset prop on the list item to just indent it um, indent it the same way it would be indented if you didn't have one so for example if you didn't use this inset prop um, over here uh, in the list item text uh, to inset the text um, this text would just naturally uh, come to the left and it would sort of look weird if you have a bunch of items and one of them happens to be starred and you know the starred one is sort of intended and all the other ones are indented to the left so you can pass that inset prop straight into the list item text uh, component the other thing they have they go over some other uh, common use cases of props for example the disabled gutters prop within the list item this one will get rid of all the paddings on the left and right and you only want to use this if your list item is already nested in a component that is going to be adding these uh adding the paddings around um that list item because as you can see it really doesn't look good when you just um have it straight to the left of it but it just prevents if you do for example um transpose some extra padding in you have an option to you know get rid of it um, from the material UI side. The next cool example they have that a lot of you might not need but I think is a cool example is if you have really long lists in React or just HTML in general you generally don't want to load that all at once into the DOM. It could put a lot of uh, uh, a lot of strain on the user's browser and the computer itself. So one uh, fix to that is just a general concept in um, React and just HTML in general which is called virtualization and that pretty much makes it so that if you have a list of 200 items and you know you have this sort of scroll bar where the user can only scroll through this amount of items it only renders this and a bit more of those actual items all the on the dom so for example right now i'm at item one 130 but if i were to go ahead and you know um, inspect element over here you can see that the um, highest level item that we have here i already have this pre-selected from uh, before i started the video but if i go into it you can see that item 125 is actually uh, the highest up item that we have rendered on the DOM right now. So everything before 125 is no longer rendering, so it doesn't take up a lot of space um, on the DOM and it doesn't, you know, ruin someone's computer uh, or, or their browsing experience and having it uh, be slow. So that's what virtualization is. And they just have a nifty little example of how they use um, an external library called React Window um, within their list component um, to do this virtualization and you should check out this example if that's something you might need uh, it's nothing specifically special with uh, the material ui component essentially they just do the exact same thing <laughs> except instead of wrapping um, their list in the list component they're wrapping it in the fixed size list component which comes from uh, that react window um, uh, library and there's nothing really special other than uh, other than that from the way they do it and of course at the end they have just some customization of how they sort of um, if you've ever used Firebase before um, the dashboard is actually made of course uh, with something related to Material UI and they pretty much the Material UI docs pretty much just remade um, exactly how the uh, uh, Firebase dashboard looks um, I called it Firebash uh, as a joke I guess um, and, and showed you how you could style the components to look like uh, that type of application. And once again, we all know Mental UI is extremely versatile when it comes to being able to style their components. And if you want to learn more about that, make sure you check out the theming and the SX props video that I have um, in the description as well. And that is pretty much it. I'm also going to link the API to every single one of these components in the description as well. Although you should note that there's not too many unique things you can do with it. Most of them were covered in all the examples we just ran through, but it doesn't hurt to check them out if you are using them for some advanced use cases and if you found value in this video make sure you leave a comment it helps a lot with the algorithm i'll try to respond to every single one and if you want to learn more about react and material ui make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notifications for the future videos and i'll see you guys in the next one